Hello. How are you? Who is this? Keto. I didn't quite it's, hear you. It's Keto. Hey, how you doing, my dear? Fine, how are you? Doing great. Wonderful. Yes, yes. So we're going to be getting started. Okay, Reverend Jerry, did you want to say anything before we get started, before I start reading? We must pray first. Okay, well, let's okay, pray. Okay, we're going to pray first. And let everybody see Reverend Jerry as she prays. Hello, everyone. I'm saying hello to those that are on Zoom this um, evening. And I'm also saying hello to those that are on Facebook Live. Thank you all for joining us this evening. And um, we are a ministry that focuses on spiritual practice, and we look for opportunities to engage in spiritual practice. Reading is a part of that spiritual practice and just anchoring in. So what I'd like to do right now is just invite you all to join me and just simply anchoring in this evening. We get a chance to simply release and let go of everything that happened so that we could be focused and we can be on point. So what I'm gonna do right now is while, while we're getting ready to do all of that, I'm gonna mute um, the people that are on Zoom. I'm muting everyone except for myself. And the reason I'm muting them is so that we will have a quality recording. What we do is after we have um, did our Zoom meeting, we also provide you with a quality pay, uh, playback every uh, week. It's called Playback Thursday. And we encourage you to go back and listen to this again. It is our model that repetition is the mother of learning. That has been our slogan for years. Matter of fact, that's how I met Mr. Hobby, learning about the power of repetition. And um, he was my teacher, and look at what happened. He groomed me very well so that I could be a spiritual teacher. So in that um, respect, I'm gonna invite you to join me right now. And one of the things we enjoy repeating over and over again, is that process of anchoring in spiritual prayer and a moment of mindfulness. So this evening, I'm taking my hands and I'm placing my hands over my heart. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. It's so that I can remember that everything begins with the heart. So I'm gonna invite you, if you feel comfortable, place your hands over your heart. If not, just um, join me right now in just slowing down, letting go of everything it took to get to this moment. And as you slow down and you anchor into this space right now, we release all the things that we need to do after this is over. We release everything that happened and who did what and how they did whatever and we're just breathing right now and as we're breathing i'm inviting you to slow down i want you to breathe in on the count of five and exhale on the count of five And I'm inviting you to recall a moment where you experienced deep care, deep appreciation, or kindness. So I'm recalling a moment right now 
I was so exhausted just the other day. And I realized I hadn't washed the dishes. And it's important for us to keep some sense of order around our kitchen counters, our kitchen, especially with all that's going on. And so in this space of exhaustion, Mr. Hobby says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And I had one of those moments. <sighs> and if you know about the ha ah, moment, you'll realize that that ha ah, moment was a moment of simple release letting go and allowing for peace to just fall over me in my slumber. I'll tell you, I went to bed and I laid down and by the time he made it up to the bedroom, I was already asleep. I was in my position because we love each other and we're practicing our social distancing and keeping ourselves safe. So when he sneezes, we want him to send that sneeze in another area. If I sneeze, the same thing. I was in my position and I had the best sleep ever. That's care. That's deep appreciation. I want you to call your moment. And if you don't have a moment, I want you to lean into mine and just feel that emotion. The motion is ah, just releasing and letting go. And I want you to anchor in that moment right here and right now. And as you're anchoring in this moment right here and right now, I want you to amplify that presence of care, of kindness. And as you're anchoring it right now, what I'm knowing is our evening is an evening filled with richness. That what needs to be heard is heard. That each person walks away with a little something that lifts them up, that inspires them and moves them through this period. That there is a piece of divine wisdom that fulfills itself. What I know is Mr. Hobby is just anchored. He's just full of himself. And in that fullness of himself, I know that the disguise of God reveals itself with clarity and wisdom, perhaps with a little humor, a little joy, with clarity in his read and divine wisdom. And so I'm just giving thanks for this moment right here and right now, and I'm naming it as good, and I'm naming it as very good. And it is from this place here that we all affirm together, and so yes. it is. Yes. yes. So I thank you all for joining us. I see we have new people that have come on. Welcome, Maria. We're grateful that you're here this evening. And I am going to mute everyone and then unmute Mr. Hobby and turn everything over to him. Okay, let's get ready for a wonderful evening. Okay. One moment, Mr. Hobby. One moment, I'm going to unmute you and you'll be ready. That's what happens when you become the assistant. Okay, am I unmuted? You are unmuted and we're ready to go. Okay. Well, folks, um, last week uh, we were on page, I think, 69, uh, 68, 69. So I'm, I'm going to start from there, okay? On uh, page 68, the last paragraph. And the author talks about it. He says, addictions keep the mind focused on the body. Many of the external solutions we have tried to help fill the void have proven to be very addictive. Look around. We're all hooked on something, food, sugar, alcohol, drugs, sex, internet porn, video games, etc. 
These addictions distract us. Our human conscious, consciousness is forced to focus on feeding the monster. This makes it very difficult to have an authentic connection with spirit. Drug and alcohol abuse kept me feeling sick and tired for decades. I consider the alcohol trap to be a big reason why many of us struggle on the spiritual path. If you find yourself stuck in this trap, you're not alone. Over 70% of the adult population is with you. This elaborate trap, one that causes sickness, addiction, and death, has been passed down from generation to generation. You never really had a chance. Everyone was in on this grand scheme. Ever since you were a child, the huge corporations have been grooming you to purchase their products. Do, do you, you really think a chance. Strawberry Everybody in on this grand scheme? Do you really think a strawberry uh, kiwi wine coolers are made for adults? The state and federal governments generate billions of dollars from alcohol tax revenue. Our healthcare industry makes huge profits treating us from all our alcohol related illnesses, diseases of the stomach, liver, pancreas, cancers, dementia, depression, etc. Finally, consider our friends and family who can't wait until we are old enough to join their fun. Most have good intentions, blind to the trap they are in. Others are aware, but fear being alone. Have you heard those saying misery loves company? Well, you can download the complete article, The Alcohol Trap, from my website. I share some of my thoughts on this global ep epidemic, which is responsible for delaying our spiritual growth. Knowledge is power. Climbing out of this trap is challenging, but achievable. If I can do it, anyone can. Like a magician revealing the secrets of a trick with this new insight, you can never be fooled again. In Annie Grace's book, This Naked Mind, many of the myths related to this elaborate trap are exposed. For me, the path to freedom was understanding how the mind was tricked and having faith in the universal law that says everything happens for a reason. One of my favorite quotes from Annie's book can be found on page 206. And now you have the advantage. You've experienced alcohol addiction, and now you know how vile and insidious it is. I have a perspective that none drinker doesn't have. I've seen the evils firsthand. Survival deserves a medal, not a stigma. I am, I am stronger than before. I now have a shield of experiential armor. I feel strong enough to stand up and fight. So again, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Don't be anonymous. Wear your scars like a badge of courage to inspire others. When can this, when, when can use this, we can use this with wisdom for many of life's challenges. And I have experienced certain things and now I have the advantage. Surrender was my path to freedom. Once my new programmer was back in charge, my addictions naturally melted away. If you haven't figured it out yet, the epic battle is a very challenging stage. As I've said, this is God's final testing ground until we learn to be appreciative of our bodyguard and love our monkey, surrender will not be possible. The bodyguard has gotten very good at his job and has no plan to be forced out. If you choose to follow the expert's advice, you'll be stuck in this battle for a very long time. Don't feel bad, you're not alone. Go to any bookstore and you will feel, you'll find volumes of self-help books explaining how to live a happy life based on the faulty notion of killing the separate self and silencing the monkey. Good luck with that. I'm here to tell you that there's a better way, actually. I've learned it's the only way. The good news is that no part of you needs to be killed. I'm trying to lead you on a path to merger, not murder. These forces of our human nature have played a very important role in our lives and with very little guidance. They will continue to serve us on the mission that lies ahead. Now, this is a huge deal. If you can grasp this concept, the battle will come to an end. You will discover that the spiritual path is easy and enjoyable when you learn to embrace our separate self. This is a major step in our evolution. All we need to do is expand our awareness a little and allow ourselves to turn within and trust. When you understand that you were born into this world as body and soul, both equally important, you will be on your way to freedom. Think about this. When the bodyguard trusts 
that the giant is not out to kill him, he'll stop fighting so hard. He will begin to listen. And this survival instinct is part of the human nature. When we feel threatened, we push back. Like any relationship, when, we're sincerely, when we sincerely convey the other person's importance, the bond will strengthen and grow. And again, it takes two to tango. Responsibility for getting over this hur trust hurdle is not all on the bodyguard. Can the giant change this, his forceful ways and learn to become a peacemaker? This reminds me of a popular Bible quote, the meek shall inherit the earth. This quote is often misunderstood. Something was lost in translation. The word meek is misleading, giving its modern day interpretation as being submissive. The original Greek word written in ancient texts was prietus. The actual translation is gentle strength. To display the right blend of force with a spirit of caring. With the proper translation, I was able to relate more to this teaching and how it affects our evolution on this adventure. When body and soul can demonstrate creatures, we, we shall inherit the earth. Hopefully through our experience on the battlefield, we will soon come to understand this truth. When the giant learns to soften, the bodyguard will have the courage to surrender the illusions of control and need for protection. A shift begins to occur. This ultimate goal during this stage is to surrender control to the soul. This is your primal way. You can only fight against Mother Nature for so long. Like a raging river, the natural flow will eventually prevail. The river will wear down all obstacles. And if you need some proof of this, just visit the Grand Canyon. A human being, as human beings, we don't have millions of years to wait for this process to unfold. If we want to be fulfilled in this lifetime, we need to act now. How can we help the soul regain control of the throne? We've already learned the bodyguard is too strong and stubborn to be forced out. What if the giant becomes a peacemaker? Maybe as a peacemaker warrior, the soul can persuade the bodyguard of his importance. History has shown that all successful mergers have required master negotiators. A foundation of trust and faith must be established to create a true partnership. The use of force only produces temporary results. Can the bodyguard be convinced that he will be, he'll not be killed? Can he be assured that he will be an important player after the merger? Yes, not only is this possible, but it is the only way to win at this game. Considering the bodyguard is just a facet of the human mind, Maybe we can learn to use logic as a path to surrender. Let's explore this approach. I'm hoping at this point in our adventure, we all have a basic understanding of the law of no mistakes. I believe all of God's expressions are very intentional. With this understanding, consider these logical questions. Why would God go through the trouble of creating this amazing human being, each with his own unique essence, personality, character, skills, only to kill this amazing creation upon surrender? This would be like saying God made a mistake. Using logic, the simple fact that we exist should persuade the bodyguard of, it, of this, his importance. If the purpose of creation is for God to express on earth, how the heck is he supposed to do this without us? How many burning bushes can there be? Maybe the messenger can be ghost-like characters descending from the heavens. How would humankind handle this? I'm guessing we would figure out a way to kill these messengers too. <laughs> yes, God needs you for this adventure. This includes your body, personality, character, and even the infinite, infamous ego. Why would so much effort be put into our training if we're going to be eliminated upon awakening? The universe has spent many years training and strengthening us for our heroic mission. If the human brain can withstand this argument, Maybe the giant will have a chance. But timing is running out. He will use every tool possible to convince the bodyguard of his importance, including logic. There are no mistakes. Kill you? No freaking way. You are an important piece of the puzzle. We cannot finish the game without you. God expresses through you. This is not a trick. I need you exactly where you are. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arana argues that it would be sinful to slay our enemies. 
The high scriptures teach us to live in harmony. Ariana goes on to say, these sensory instruments were divinely created for man to exist in the universe. And Krishna explains, we are not to destroy these sense instruments. The devotee is not being asked to blind his eyes or to deafen his ears, but to slay their bad habits which keep the soul in prison. As I argue throughout this book, we don't need to kill the eagle. We just need to tame it. This is similar to breaking a wild horse. The master is not trying to kill his magnificent creature. We are attempting to reach an agreement or a compromise. If successful, a powerful partnership will be formed. Everybody that finds himself trapped in the bodyguard's protective bubble will eventually feel imprisoned. When the bodyguard has the courage to lay down his sword, we'll all live in blissful harmony as one. Now the Paramasa Yagananda refers to this expression of self as a purified ego. He says, the sensory functions have their rightful place in man's life only after he has subordinated them by realizing himself as a soul, one as a soul, one with spirit, not a body dominated by the senses. We must securely anchor in our true divine nature. Don't be skeptical of this message because you feel your position in life is menial. Upon awakening, you'll find yourself exactly where you, you're needed to be. You might be a housewife, a construction worker, a doctor, a CEO, CEO or, or carpenter. And as Shakespeare wrote, all the world is a stage and all the men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. The key word in this quote is play. We need to surrender and become conscious players in this amazing game. It is time to play your part. You are on a convert mission, embedded amongst the sleepwalkers. Will body and soul find the gentle strength needed to surrender their weapons and merge? This reunion is necessary for God to express on earth. Everyone asks the same questions. Why are we here? What is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of creation? Well, this is it. We are born into this world as one, body, soul, and spirit. Our divine nature took the back seat while we learned the ropes and became street smart. It is now time to reunite for our heroic mission. And as a child of God, this is your birthright. You were born into royalty. Although spirit will patiently wait to be discovered, time is short. These bodies only last so long. You have the power to end this battle now. Don't let your time expire without experiencing the game played at the highest level. For me, surrender was not a lightning bolt moment of inspiration, although I believe it can be for some. This was more of a gradual awakening. I also got lucky and, and stumbled upon some magic words. Is there more to life than this? Like Alibaba saying, open sesame, this too open, a door to a hidden treasures. Don't get me wrong, I definitely got hit over the head with the, with the club a lot. Eventually, I began to accept the universal laws, and history has proven these truths time and time again. I have personally lived through enough bad experiences that turn out to be blessings in disguise. I slowly, I slowly began to look at the world differently. It started to become clear that the universe was working for me and not against me. All experiences become learning opportunities. This awareness represents the beginning of the end to this battle. This is a blissful place. The pain and suffering related to the constant lessons, tests, and trials will soon come to an end. Life begins to flow naturally. Unfortunately, we delay surrender because we have gotten comfortable with the pain and suffering in life. We believe life is supposed to be a struggle. We think we can have it both ways. We want to hang on to our normal life and occasionally check in with our spiritual side. I go to church on Sundays. I'm good. Being aware is not enough. We have decisions to make. Many of us have reached the discovery stage, aware of a soul's essence within, but we're not ready to commit. And if you're lucky, you'll get the call several times throughout your life. Do you now have the courage to answer? Spoiler alert, there are higher levels of waiting for us to be on discovery. In the end, many people will say, I didn't know. You can no longer use this excuse. 
You can put the genie back in the bottle. When you understand this process, surrender will become easy because it is our natural state of being. I'm not asking you to do something. I'm asking you to stop doing something. Think about this concept. Shouldn't it be easy to stop fighting? On this rare occasion, your mind is quiet. You'll pull, you'll feel the pull from within. You'll see the true self. Unfortunately, we quickly look away. The mere thought of surrender scares the hell out of us. If this is you, I have great news. You don't need to give up your life when you surrender. A lot of time and energy has been invested into your persona, which is your mask, and your place in the world. You get to be an undercover agent on a heroic mission, God in disguise. How much fun is that? The need to give up your life on your, or your stuff is just another misconception about the spiritual path. This is exactly the kind of bullshit the bodyguard wants us to believe to support his fight to retain the throne. Material and sensory pleasures are not evil. Even the Gita teaches, evil lies only in the misuse of the products and the power of nature. Enjoyment of this abundance when free from attachment will be expressed in noble achievements. I believe the riches of the world were intended to be enjoyed by all. This idea was reinforced by Ray Wayne Dyer at a Hay House conference I attended in New York. Someone in the audience questioned Wayne's wealth and how it related to his spirituality. Wayne was unapologetic in his response. Yes, I have a beautiful home in Maui and I also have homes in California and Florida. The universe wants us all to be abundant. I love it. When the veil is tempor temporarily lifted and we begin to understand the illusionary nature of the physical world, attachment becomes a pointless idea. I would like to take this thought one step further. What if your awareness could make the veil transparent or lucid? What if we could live a lucid life? I'm sure everyone has expressed vivid dreams while sleeping. When the alarm wakens, you're in the morning. It's almost embarrassing how real the dream felt. You might be sweating because someone was chasing you or, or crying because your feelings were hurt. You'll have the same type of awakening when your soul leaves the body at the time of your death. Similar to your alarm going off in the morning, you will quickly discover this life was also a vivid dream. Like in your sleeping dream, everything that seemed so real will vanish in an instant. In this moment, we will realize how much energy was wasted worrying about all of our material possessions. The good news is that we don't have to wait for death to benefit from this awareness. We can begin living a lucid life today. And to better understand this concept of lucidity, let's take a moment to, uh, to explore our lucid dreams. You are asleep at night, having a dream, but not completely absorbed by the dream state. In other words, you are aware that you are having a dream. This lucid state is fun. Knowing you are in a dream world gives you the freedom to be fearless. We can enjoy the experience because we are aware of the illusion. Similar to this lucid dream, we can enjoy lucid living now. When we live a lucid life, aware of the illusion, we can enjoy this temporary adventure without fear or attachment. Lucidity gives us the freedom to live big and bold. Don't let your alarm go off only to discover you never had the courage to express your true self. Sorry, no snooze button on this alarm. Most humans today are either unconscious students in the school of life or seekers aware of their divine nature, but still engaged in the epic battle. If we find ourselves in, in one of these stages, we obviously have more to learn. Although you can't skip any steps, free will does determine how much time you will spend at each level. The seeker is aware and has a choice to make. Will I continue to follow the instructions from my bodyguard or am I ready to surrender control to the giant? <coughs> this might be a good time to discuss the word surrender. For most of us, this word carries a negative connotation. For most of us, if, well, if you look up surrender in the dictionary, you'll find the following. To give up, cease resistance to the enemy to lose. Am I really telling you the ultimate goal in the game of life is to surrender? That sounds like a bunch of crap. This is funny since the surrender I'm referring to will be a joyful, blissful experience. When we regain, when we gain the strength and wisdom needed to 
reconnect with our spiritual nature, we will emerge as powerful beings. This surrender is a choice. This will never force, will never be forced on you. you. You must reach a point where you don't give a shit what anyone else thinks. Although this might sound selfish, it's imperative. Before we can become supernatural and be, be of the service to the world, we must be true to ourselves. As Bran Brown says, we must have the courage to stand alone in the wilderness. When Maya Angelou speaks about being authentic, she says the price is high, but the rewards are great. We need to stop using the opinions of others as an excuse. Drop your guard and have the courage to be vulnerable for just a moment. The veil will be lifted. You'll be, you will clearly see your true nature and the illusion of being separate. And it, it will vanish in an instant. When this occurs, a powerful force becomes activated in your life. The, word, the rewards of surrender will be instant. The results you see in your life will be all the proof you need. You reunite, you re Reunite is one which is how you were born into this world. This is your natural state of being. The big question is this. Will these two sides work out their differences before it's too late? Will the bodyguard have the courage to stop resisting? Or does the soul return to a source empty-handed again? Will body and soul successfully reach the highest levels of this game by evolving and emerging to become true players during this awesome adventure? When we surrender, we are transformed. The three become one, body, spirit, and soul. When I was searching for a word to describe this transformation, I looked up su supernatural in the dictionary. The definition was perfect, a creative force beyond the laws of nature, God-like. From now on, I will refer to the state of surrender as becoming a su supernatural human, which is our ultimate goal on this journey. Let's Let's go with the Superman for short. Man is an abbreviation for human, no reference to gender. This is where the magic begins. How do I become a Superman? This is one of the many rewards of surrender. This is where our free will comes to play. This process can be long or short. My bodyguard was very stubborn. He always felt threatened when I started to communicate with the giant. If you set aside time for daily meditation, an inner dialogue will begin. The bodyguard gradually begins to soften. He begins to relinquish control, allowing the giant to guide us. With the soul guidance, life begins to flow effortless, effortlessly. The bodyguard will begin to see the giant as a powerful friend. The universe will reward us when we begin to take direction from the soul. The bodyguard can't argue with the results. He begins to trust and allow, and allow suggestions from the giant to direct our thoughts and actions. In other words, we finally, uh, we're finally allowed to follow our inner guide. For a short time, we experience being in the zone. This is actually our primal way, our divine nature at work. We would always be in the zone if we could only learn to surrender. Although the bodyguard still feels vulnerable, he continues to allow the giant's input. His fear and need to control begin to fade. This is a bittersweet time. He understands that his original role in this life will soon become obsolete. It eventually becomes obvious that the body would be best served by surrendering control to the giant. At last, the bodyguard takes the leap and surrenders. The battle has come okay, to an end. <laughs> okay. The one okay. That last sentence. Yeah, let me finish that last sentence. And with the battle has come to an end, and with open arms and a weary smile, the two embrace. This would oh. be a good time for fireworks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> send it back to you. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, we thank the people that are on Facebook. And I'm going to mute you, Larry. We're getting some feedback right now, so I'm going to mute you for a moment. And hopefully everyone is hearing what it is I'm saying. So um, I just want to thank everyone for being a part of this. And I just want to open it up right now for any comments, any questions. Anyone have anything they'd like to share? And you're saying, well, Reverend Jerry, you muted me. So I'm muting everyone right now.
Any comments? I'd like to thank, this is Kathy Redmond, and I would like to thank Larry for his beautiful voice and the feeling in which he delivers the content of this author's work. Um, there was a, such a passion about it that you could feel the passion from the writer through Larry. It, it was truly as if Larry had channeled our, the writer of this book and just shared it from his heart. And um, because of that, I think I was a more open channel to hearing it and hearing all of it and not drifting away from time to time. Oh, good. I'm so glad that you shared that. Um, and of course, you could hear the passion in his voice, his choice of words for certain things, um, expressing how he felt about everything. Any other comments? Hi, this is Keto. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just uh, want to express my appreciation and gratitude because the, the reading is just a simple reminder of who we really are because I know I forget and uh, I get caught up in things that are really outside of myself and not uh, akin to my, my true nature. And so I appreciate the fact that um, Larry is reading this book. It's, it's very timely because it is a reminder. And so thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is definitely some authenticity here. And I don't know if you guys heard it, but basically what he's saying is there is power in your spiritual practice. So I'm grateful that you guys have chosen this book study to be a part of that anchoring for you and reminding you the power of spiritual practice to give yourself a break and just be reminded is a good thing. Anyone else wants to share? Okay. Well, you know, can I just add something? Yes. I I also appreciate the break of of listening to Larry read because we're just being bombarded with COVID nineteen right now, and it has a way of making you feel vulnerable and helpless. Yeah. So in listening to Larry read this, it kind of helps you to restore. Uh, your sense of 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 power mm -hmm. uh, back, and so um, you know that's that's another thing that I appreciate about this this reading. Um, I I don't feel as helpless mm -hmm. uh, or as hopeless um, during these reading sessions. Yeah. And you know, this, this, this is definitely our intention, especially during this time period, um, because um, we have been inundated again and again and again with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a sense of balance. And I believe Craig um, made reference to that this evening, the fact that we need to have a sense of balance in our life. And if we have that balance, we got to balance each side of it. And if we do not balance each side, we get out of harmony. And when you get out of harmony, what it does is it creates chaos in your life. So right. um, I think about chaos. I think about how it personally impacts all of us. And it can mm -hmm. impact us in so many ways. It can impact our, um, it, it'll bring st instability in terms of our physical health, mentally, um, not being able to focus, not being able to rest and all of those different things there. And I'm saying these words because I know that this evening or tomorrow evening, someone is going to hear this. And when they hear it, they will be able to relate. So my goal, our goal, when we set this in motion was to help those people 
in coping with what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to cope with what's going on right now, you're also able to make sound decisions and set something new in motion where you're able to move forward in a successful manner. That's the reason I always say we don't tell people what to think, but we teach them how to think. We teach them how to use this gift that we have, this human experience that we have. And when we learn how to use that, we're going to create a world that works for everyone. We're going to create more peace and harmony in our lives also. Yeah. Anyone else want to make a comment? Wow. Well, I thank you all for being a part of this. And we do have a couple of announcements. I'm going to invite you to join us tomorrow evening um, when we talk about um, empowering ourselves. Tomorrow evening is the last of our five-point part series, um, which um, uh, is the uh, we're all in it together. And this part is very important because it ties all the pieces. It brings all the pieces together. We're going to be talking about vision and moving forward. Uh, beyond COVID-19. This is, for me, the second part of education and growth. Because you can get as much information in the world as possible. But we go back to that thing about, we're not here to tell you what to think. We're here to teach you how to think. And part of that process is having an experience, being able to be in a place where you feel peace of mind, where you are empowered in your movement forward. So this is part of that process that Stephen Covey says, sharpening your saw as you move forward. We also have um, a big event coming up. It is an eight week program called Prosperity Three. And I'm inviting everyone to join us for this Prosperity 3 program. This Prosperity 3 program is going to support us in um, deleting a lot of stuff that we're hearing right now in the news. And that, that stuff that they're saying is there's not enough. But we're going to support you in anchoring in spirit, anchoring in mind in knowing there is more than enough and demonstrating um, good in your life, prosperity in all areas of your life. This begins Tuesday, um, Tuesday, um, May 19th. I know that Larry Hobby's gonna be there. And I think Catherine Redmond told me, I'm not sure that she said she's gonna be there. Are you gonna be there, Catherine Redmond? Yes, I am. Okay. With bells on. <laughs> With bells on. Okay. <laughs> and we're inviting everyone else to join us in this experience. It will be wonderful. Um, it will uh, be very um, uplifting. And I promise you there will be something you'll be able to get from that experience that's going to last you a lifetime. So... That is all that I have to share this evening. We love, we appreciate you. Join us tomorrow evening. I think you're going to enjoy it. We brought in some experts and one person I think you guys are gonna really enjoy. Her name is Ray Jordan. I've worked with her over the course of the years. And she's the person that has been responsible for navigating and laying the seeds and the foundation um, for spiritual living as we're moving forward for a number of years. So we're grateful for her presence on this call and I think you will benefit. Other than that, I'm gonna invite you, I'm gonna turn this back over to Larry Hobby to pray us out and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Rev. Derry. Okay, what I'm gonna do, uh, as our as our prayer, I'm going to read some affirmations, and I invite you to embody these in your in your own soul, in your own consciousness. 
I am brave, cheerful, abundant, bold, grateful, love, courageous, healthy, confident, joyous, good, compassion, trustworthy, bright, authentic. I am aware, confident, blessed, selfless, loving, infinite God. I am one with my creator, fun, blissful, passion, strong, heroic joy. I am one with all creation, fit, blessed, complete, playful, relaxed, fearless. I am powerful, thankful, radiant, enough, funny, awesome, I am free to express my authentic self, aware, generous, beautiful, love, eternal. I am courageous, blessed, enthusiastic, energetic, laughter. I am attracting all that is needed, energy for my adventure, joyous, whole, intelligent, caring and happy, powerful. I am creating, grateful, I'm heroic, heaven on earth, strong, peace, able, successful, limited, light, passionate, and brilliant, and grace. And I bless each and every one that's on Facebook and those that are on Zoom. I bless you with all of you. I know that you will embrace these for your own self because we do create our own lives. You know, our word is powerful. Whatever we say, hey, that's the way it's going to be. So I'm blessing everyone that's on this, that's on this uh, call tonight. And I know that uh, you guys will tune in with me again next week at 6.30. We'll continue on with our book study. So I'm blessing each and every one of you. And so it is. Amen. Good night, folks. It is. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So it is. see you all night. for those that want to join us for the prayer circle at 8 o'clock. I'm sending you the information right now. Have a blessed evening. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.